Zetsho is essentially a guy that used to bash mostly on G for abusing a roll catch exploit. I want to give him the benefit of the doubt and just assume that like he doesn't really understand the culture of the Souls games and PvP in the general. Then just because of that, we can take a moment to talk about history of the Souls games ever since Dark Souls 1. Firstly, what we are going to do as we are about to look through Zed's uh, tweets. We might add a little bit of commentary, but only after we are going to read everything, the whole thread, we are going to talk further about the story of the Souls games, misconceptions that appear in the tweets, and so on and so forth. Okay. Explaining how the cheaters in Elden Ring use cheat engine for their invasions. And then he links his own clip. Do you want to watch the clip? We can watch the clip. It's pretty great. It's got a great little sound bite. But the one thing about there. the PvP community is they are a bunch of cheaters. cheaters if it was any dude. other game, like if it was Modern Warfare or any other PvP arena game or anything, they would be completely just disowned. And, and then you come to Elden Ring and people use something literally called Cheat Engine to give themselves 25 of every weapon so that we could, they, can, they can do this. And then they can page down. I forget how they do it, but basically they can page down through twenty-five weapons. And uh, and they think that's then, totally fine. Don't leave your menus through the fucking bug button. I beg you, use the start button. Oh, this is That's me what so really much. triggers you. Is using that's not what using B the, button. Like I don't care about anything he says, <laughs> but when people use the B button to quick the menus, I am fucking malding. Don't do that, man. He makes this analogy that like, oh, th there's all these cheaters in Elden Ring and no one cares and. If they were doing this in modern warfare, they would be banned from the community. They would be ostracized, whatever. Yeah, it's a different and, game. And like, it's yeah, different. I was going to say, he doesn't even stop to take one second to think maybe it's different. It's not comparable. I, for example, spent a lot of my time playing shooters. I was never cheating outside of like a once to see what is the cheat about, what is aimbot and so on. But it was in the safe environment without bothering anyone just to, to gain the expertise on What's, what am I dealing with when other people are cheating, yeah? In this game, on the other hand, I am full-pledged cheater when it comes to the PvE, <laughs> and I can give my reasoning why this is the case, and I also fucking hate it, let's make it clear. I would prefer to not have fucking requirement to do that, but in my current state, if I want to remain competitive, I have to do it. This is an amazing one. So he jumps straight to Gamergate, by the way. So that's what this tweet is. So he goes, but someone sleeps with a games journalist and gamers were all up in arms about it. Nadia uh, is good at Modern Warfare 2, so she must be cheating, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, Nadia literally has been just like exposed as a cheater, correct? Okay, like, so this is. I'm not a modern warfare person. I don't know the what's going on with that. I hear she's actually a very good modern warfare player, but she was also exposed for cheating. I have heard something about I, that, I think... but I do not have like a, you know much understanding of the topic. So that's yeah, fucking sick I can't photo. really weigh <laughs> in. Yeah, yeah, I can't. I can't weigh in authoritatively on this, but that was my understanding. Was that like yes, she is good, but also anyway. In Elden Ring, nah, it's cool if you use cheat engine to get 25 max level of every weapon. Again, yeah. it's just not not comparable. Not comparable at all. Comparing aimbots to duplicating weapons is ridiculous. Comparing aimbotting uh, or wall hacking to infinite HP or stat hacking, sure, right? And no one in the community likes those things. Again, he's just missing the point. To put this into perspective, each playthrough, you can only require a fixed amount of certain weapons, upgrade materials, and Ashes of War. They are fixed and not drops. So this is just incorrect because weapons, are, yeah, like there are drop weapons, there are, there are bell bearings. It so, depends so per get... case. He made a, simplifi a simplification. It, he shouldn't fucking do that, yeah. Because of course, like yeah. there are like a limited stuff. Like for example, the uh, max upgrade uh, materials are limited. Uh, but yeah. you can get, for example, on one playthrough, essentially every single weapon in the game to the plus twenty four slash. Plus, uh, plus nine when it's a unique weapon, mm -hmm. and then like a speed run next playthroughs for the sake of to upgrade the weapons to the max. Yeah, exactly. Again, he, but it seems like he's not aware of that, right? Like because he says you simply can't get the upgrade materials, and it's like, yeah, I mean we can, right? Like we can 
we can get everything to plus 24, plus 9. I, I can assume, like, it, it is Twitter, like, he has limited amount of the character, so I, I can give him benefit of the doubt he, he did it for the sake of simplification. Let's hope, like, he didn't do that for the sake of manipulation. The fastest time for speedruns in Elden Ring at any percent are about one hour. To get every weapon plus all upgrades, you need to 100% completion, and those take 100, 100 hours if you're the best speedrunner. Then there's the... Okay. You don't actually have to do 100% completions because certain dungeons, the reward is a spirit summon or some shit. So you can completely miss those. Like, even if we're talking just from a totally legit farming perspective, that's just total. That's not true at all. But a second I thought maybe like him is glitchless or something like that. But he means that on a person, these speedruns are for minutes. He's using the most extreme version to try and prove a point. And it's like, yeah, like it took me 100 hours to beat the, to 100% the game on my first playthrough. We have X2 in the chat, literally the guy who makes the mules. Like when X2 is gathering, how long does a full playthrough take you? Depends on base level or meta. 20 hours for a 125 character, maybe 35 for base level. Okay, so, so for someone to pull this off, they'd have to play the game 25 times at a minimum of 100 hours so for 2500 hours of gameplay just to get all the weapons when they're done they wouldn't be able to get them all to plus 25 no way these dudes are doing that i just want to camp on this this line so i've seen people say this broadly in the community no way these dudes are doing that people and underestimate how good community is at these games yeah and i've also just i i'm i'm really sick of seeing that as this argument no one's gonna grind it like have you have you ever played World of Warcraft? Have you ever played any RPG where there are consumables that give you extra like benefit? Like people spend hours and hours and hours grinding potions in World of Warcraft or any other game. You know what I'm saying? Like of course we're they're going to spend the time for the because it gains them an advantage. Of course they're going to spend it. What they do is they fire up cheat engine or do the item duping with a friend using save game glitches. That's also why they all play on PC so they can cheat. I thought that was funny because G plays on PlayStation. I personally think that like a safe scamming and using cheat engine is, is this like a similar level level of offense, essentially. I mean, cheat engine for the sake of build making, obviously. In, in both cases, I, I would prefer if that wouldn't be the case. But yeah, we leave. Well, we're going to continue later on why it is the case, just by talking yeah. about history of Souls games. If you're out there cheating in everything you can, hard swapping using GUI glitches, <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> when you start losing, giving yourself tons of crafting materials and not really playing the game, can you actually say you're all that good at it? Most people would say, no, you're cheating. Playing around in your inventory when you are losing, when you're on the, on the backbone, is actually something that you usually don't want to do in vast majority of the cases like unless you have like a well prepared like a structure of swapping and you have like a plan ahead you are just not swapping to own another weapon like to, to just start winning yeah it's not how it works uh, does he like uh, say here that swapping is cheating he you says meant? it's a gooey glitch it's a swapping is a gooey glitch and is a, is a yeah abusing the game or whatever he, he says that in a previous tweet it's very apparent in the in the souls games like the swapping is like you know very visible but Holy shit, dude, every single RPG that has open inventory in the combat has its form of the hard swapping. Like currently in Dark and Darker, you are hard swapping the fucking pots for the sake of to have more <laughs> yeah. heals and so on. I, I remember like there was like a, some sort of the of the hard swapping methods in uh, freaking uh, Diablo, I think, too. I, you are playing Skyrim and in the combat you are fucking like, especially if you are playing like some sort of the caster class you are in the fucking menus very fucking often in the games that i know very well like for example gothic series you are literally required to go to your fucking menus for the sake of to heal in the middle of the combat because there is no button that allows you to just like drink the potion like that it's very normal in the rpgs that you are menuing it is yeah. base fucking shit and yeah, it's literally been there since like yeah Diablo, man. Like, <laughs> and I can understand some people like might consider it as like advantages or bad or whatever, and they are entitled to have their own opinion. But if you are saying that it is glitch, then you are just fucking dishonest. You might say I don't like it, and I'm like, okay, sure, fine. To be honest, I would be even up to check how the game plays without hard swaps, so how the meta would evolve and so on. That would be possibly interesting thing to do. It's just dishonest to say that like menuing equals glitch, exploit, and so on, because this yeah. is like 
<laughs> fundamental base mechanic. Ability to swap one item onto another. This is the part that actually baited, like successfully baited me. Uh, and then he says, to put a cap on this discussion, even G9, easily <laughs> the most toxic invader out there, says it's all about the build, not the skill. Uh, well, if it's all about the build and you're using Cheat Engine to acquire an insane number of, fro number of them, then... And, you know, leaving the conclusion to you. I, I literally clowned on this for a while last night where it was like, if you think that G9 is the most toxic invader, you have not done invading very long. I mean, like, I disagree. And I am not going to go further on it because there's, like, really no point. It is his opinion on, on, on G. Everyone knows that G has absolutely fucking shit PR. The, the thing is, though, that every single, like, adult supposed to understand that bad PR doesn't mean bad person. You know, it's something that might happen to you. Maybe you made some mistakes in the past, but putting these labels on people, I find kind of disgusting. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't like it. I, I think this is just fucking like very, very low. I literally got ganked by three people all stat hacking last night. And those people are less toxic than like, come on, man. It betrays a lack of understanding of the community. And further, that video is not about the subject that he's talking about. Yeah, he is mentioning there, like, there is basically no skill invo involvement in the game because it's all about the build. In Elden Ring, build pays way higher role than, for example, it was in the Dark Souls 3. Dark Souls 3 was more skill-oriented. This game is more build-oriented. That doesn't mean that skill doesn't matter. No, like, you know, you might give, like, for example, dual spears to some absolute doo-doo gamer, and he might even accidentally kill you with, like, three trusting <laughs> attacks. Because, yes, this setup is so freaking powerful, but more skilled player... If they are going to have like a mandatory tools, like even like some sort of simple stuff like quick step, they are going to win. There is no doubt about it. Even title. Elden Ring is less about skills, but more about builds. And this is fucking true. Less in comparison to the other Souls games. Well, and this is basically end of the thread. And we can talk about history of the Souls games and the fundamentals of why his whole premise that he has here is, is just like coming from the point of the ignorance. I guess we can start talking about like history of the Souls games overall uh, in relation to Cheat Engine. Uh, so the first Souls game that I have ever played is uh, Dark Souls uh, 1, uh, Prepare to Die Edition, the PC version. Yeah. Back in the days when it was running on an amazing platform called Games for Windows Live. And oh, yeah. we, we had to wait like 20 minutes before we would collect even a singular seed to invade anyone so like <laughs> you know it was it was a blast all but parries and backstabs real dark souls one was uh very wild when it comes to uh to cheat engine you see it was very new essentially eh? it was only starting and because of that uh, cheat engine almost didn't exist at all like use of the cheat engine was just almost out of the question people were using trainers and stuff like that so like oh yeah <laughs> kind of like an injection that allowed you to like somewhat manipulate the code and because of that you could give yourself the infinite amount of the hp change your stats on the fly give yourself souls give yourself like a one hit kills and so on cheating essentially was like very basic N not much to say beside that in dark souls 2 Cheat engines started to be a little bit more apparent, although still like not that popular. Uh, the uh, Prepare to Die edition is to the basically period of 2012 to 2014, and Dark Souls 2 is 2014 to technically 2016. And by Dark Souls 2, I mean both uh, Dark Souls 2 Vanilla and Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin edition that was released yeah. somewhere in 2015. So cheat engine started be uh, started to be a little bit uh, more apparent, but also like still not that popular. Mostly people were like cheating in the way that they were, for example, safe scamming. Yeah, someone like right. they were, were they they were dropping items to each other. Yeah, then reloading the the saves, uh, bringing up the backup, and in such way. They were like crafting the builds. It was also like somewhat apparent in Dark Souls uh, 1, but I personally didn't experience that much of it. It, it only was in the, the, the times of Dark Souls when finally vast majority of community started noticing that they can speed up the process, at least 
Right. It is like that from my perspective and from the bubble focused around me. Some, as someone who wasn't really engaged in the PvP of Dark Souls 2, um, was save scumming used also as a way of kind of overcoming the soul memory mechanic? I, I yes. Again, I didn't really engage yes. with that at all. Yes, so, the, the one of the reasons why save scumming became popular even is most likely because of requirement to somewhat work around the very poorly implemented soul memory mechanic at the beginning of the of the of the game uh, because uh, yeah like at the beginning of of Dark Souls 2 you was getting like shit tons of souls for every single win and because of that you was like skyrocketing to the highest bracket if someone are, is not aware what soul memory is in Dark Souls 2 the way how you was connecting to other people was through the volume of soul memory which was putting you at the certain brackets of the matchmaking. And if, for example, you... Well, and, and, like, soul memory basically was the amount of the souls that you gathered through the playthrough in total. So, like, every single time you won the invasion, you was getting some souls, and because of that, it was impacting your overall soul memory. And, yeah, like, because of that, people yeah. were ending in the highest bracket very, very quickly. I remember I myself had, like, a, a hundreds of million of souls... On, of, on, of, this, of the soul memory on my character back in the days of the vanilla Dark Souls 2. They changed that really quickly, in fact. It was like a two or three patches that they, they finally like uh, changed the way how soul memory works and it was getting like way less souls overall. It uh, essentially was already too late. People started safe scamming, people started using mods uh, for the sake of to stop the, the soul memory from increasing and so on, yeah? And so... I asked that question specifically because I think if I understand it right, it sounds like a lot of these ways came came from like overcoming these limitations, these quite silly limitations that FromSoft was putting Yeah, on. bad game design. It is it is the main reason. When people like regular folks were just like a doing regular safe scamming, and this is that was like essentially for many people uh, the first iteration of kind of cheating the system of the games for the sake of convenience. You had like a particular individuals that started using cheat engine for different purposes. Some of them were malicious, but some of them were very interesting. And I'm going to show you. Here you go. Like, this is not something that was in the game, yeah? Cheat engine users were able to, to manipulate the projectiles in the game and do, like, very cool effects. And they were, like, a jumping onto, like, you know, onto the invasions, invading people, and do this cool stuff. There was a guy that, uh, for example, was invading me with two fucking fridges on the hands. Fridges? Fridges. He had, like, a fucking weapons that were looking like fucking fridges. How? <laughs> like, I mean, like, not texture? the texture, but shape, yeah? Like, you know... Like, oh, okay, okay. So yeah, it's yeah, just like, it's, it's just like shape, his huh? name was a fridge man or something like that. And, you know, <laughs> and he... Uh, Talgis, yeah, his name was Talgis. And he was doing stuff like that. He was an amazing guy. And I remember shit tons of cheat engine users that were doing this type of stuff. And they were doing that in the good faith. And they 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 were amazing. Like it, it, they were enriching the gameplay. Because of that, like for example, my first experience with cheat engine users was very positive. Because these people were using that mostly for the sake of to do cool stuff to enrich your gameplay. It was very fun. Like, look at this. Like, it's, it's fucking great. And yeah, it's, it's not even like a, the, the best uh, video that I have seen. Like, uh, I think like Albino's video was a uh, little bit like more prettier type of the showcase. Dark Souls PS2 2 was the start of the mini boss cheaters. What is that? Yeah, they had like a names, they had abilities of the bosses and so on. Yeah, uh, they would make move swaps, custom spells, ATC. Yeah, like uh, like Vito is saying, it was very cool. And you had like a bad actors. You had like a people that were using the cheat engine mal maliciously. Like one of them was Albino, and right. uh, they were, for example, spamming others with what was called that thing. Uh, yeah, here you go. Like Cinnamon says, Corrosifern. So like what what that item was doing, it was destroying your equipment. And because you was getting constantly spammed, you couldn't fucking move at all. So you'd had you, the, the best thing that you could do in such situation is either to wait for the end of the invasion. 
because the time limit of the invasion was 15 minutes in Dark Souls 2, or you mm. had to just simply quit the game. But if you are going to quit the game through the Alt of 4, then after like a few quits, you are simply going to get soft banned. So you would get soft banned for quitting? Yes, yes. You even had item in Dark Souls 2 that allowed you to disable your soft ban, but only once. So yeah, it was it was it was very very interesting thing. Dark Souls 2 was very multiplayer oriented. It, not every decision was good obviously, but they tried to make the environment that is like fair in multiplayer. The problem is that they didn't take into consideration that someone might spam you with the fucking machine gun of the corrosive urns because of the cheat engine, yeah. People who are using it in good faith and then you have people who are using it in bad faith. Yeah, exactly. And that was that was essentially like the beginning uh at least to me of acknowledging what shit engine is and uh, throughout my history of Dark Souls 2 uh, I myself uh, wasn't really uh doing uh, much with the shit engine in fact I well I I wasn't doing like anything with the cheat engine, but I was getting like item drops from my viewers and there is a chance they were using cheat engine. Yeah. So I was somewhat like uh, already involved into the whole thing with the, with the cheat engine. Also like a safe scamming and like uh, getting the drops and using trainers in case of end of Dark Souls 1 was something that, that I was doing also to speed up the process of, of middle making. So yeah, like, yeah. but yeah, like a cheat engine, not yet until this garbage <laughs> so dark, the best one. dark Souls. i i generally think dark souls 3 is the best game in the series personally don't like it i can i can i can see that it is definitely the best in dark souls 3 things evolved and a lot uh, people started using the cheat engine like in various different ways some of them were using them maliciously some of them were using them in the good faith uh like in dark souls 3 you have the rise of the guy called malcolm yeah dark souls 3 uh, a content creator that is uh, oh i think this guy killed me in elden ring there is a high chance he was making like a uh, various different things and yeah one of them is that <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that looks pretty great to me. I don't know. That that, that looks pretty. But yeah, he he, he was he was uh, at least this is what people say. I'm not sure if that's true. But he was uh, f contributing to people getting perma banned. Uh, apparently. Oh. Uh, like, uh, but uh, I I also seen like to to be absolutely fair to the guy, I also have seen information that actually he never was doing it in opinion of other people and this is just like a misinformation so it might be the case it might be not but what he's doing here is quite fucking fun it is it is unique this is like that example of what we were talking about so kind of a boss fight yeah dark souls 3 is the first souls game that i have encountered the usage of the cheat engine on like a on the scale of tool that it wasn't just like a cheating tool no matter if like a good or bad way people started using it for the sake of to host tournaments and make like a tournament environments people started using it for the convenience to get themselves uh, the uh, items and so on uh, it's important to remember that like a, for example like a, in the, the the stuff that we have nowadays like a free camps and so on it is possible because of cheat engine like cheat engine became yeah. a tool and uh, it became a tool that it also had scripts for the sake of to prevent being abused by cheat engine so people were using cheat engine for the sake of to stop people that were abusing cheat engine so yeah, it became <laughs> it became like a tool that was very like a fundamental for like very it was like on the foundations of what you need to have if you are running the game on the PC if you want to prevent a lot of the unfortunate like situations. It had like a positive side, it had it had negative side and it is exactly like that today because we can jump onto the Elden Ring finally. And nowadays, what is going on with Cheat Engine is basically evolution of that. It is used as a tool. It is something very fundamental for the PC players. PC players uh, use it for the safe sake to make the builds faster. Uh, they use it for the sake of to uh, 
bring themselves like a lot of the convenience type of stuff uh, for example unlock the bonfires early and so on yeah they are using that for the sake of uh, to create interesting environments there is not much of the difference between yeah. dark souls 3 and elden ring besides that uh, besides that that you cannot just use cheat engine in the online mode in elden ring and right. i think unless you have some sort of the workaround yeah but uh, very little uh, of gamers have access to this type of shit. Vast majority of people, me included, uh, just use cheat engine in the offline mode, get themselves like items, for example, and so on, for the sake to to create the uh, the builds faster, and then like do not use any cheat engine whatsoever in the online mode, unless I'm playing on the seamless co-op. Then I'm using cheat engine for amazing functions, like for example, auto respawns. Like for example, let's say that I am practicing to the tournament with people, or I'm just like have regular practice. We have scripts that allows us to remove all the status effects from ourselves. It allows us to respawn in exactly place where you have died and instantly without any loading screens and so on. So it is basically, it became a tool. And this is how I see cheat engine nowadays. This is this is it. That's yeah, that's that's I mean, that's the story of the of the Souls games at Shin Tenjin, in my opinion. From my perspective. Yeah, like Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I, I think I think that goes along with, with mods and stuff as well, right? Where like it's the, the this is basically the community's way of adapting to the situation at hand, right? Like that there's these things there that are holding things back from where the community wants to see, and it's using these utilities to make it better right like just look at like seamless you know like is a great example of like creating a specific environment where a lot of the problems of, of elden ring are being overcome right i like cheat engine i personally think it is good alternative to not finished online environments that we have in the souls games in general like these games are like they are not even finished completely in pve there is like a lot of the uh, stupid decisions uh, in regards, for example, of farming and how inconvenient like a farming is completely not user friendly. It's even worse in PvP because PvP and overall multiplayer component of this game was only taken very seriously in Dark Souls 2. It was like kind of core of, of Dark Souls 2. It's basically, it, it never was the case ever since. On, like the, the first thing that they care about is PvE in these games when they are creating them. And and because of that, like I see these games have, as kind of sandbox with all the possibilities that you, that you can do. And for the sake of to enrich your sandbox experience, I see Cheat Engine as something that is in many cases at the given moment mandatory, even though I would prefer if that wouldn't be the case. I just would prefer to yeah, have absolutely. well done game. Sadly, like th <laughs> these games are beautiful. They are they are amazing, but they, they have like shit tons of flaws. Mostly technical aspect related flaws. And, and because of that, I do use Cheat Engine and many others also use Cheat Engine. In fact, like anyone that is PvP dedicated player has some sort of the of the contact with Cheat Engine, either themselves or, or through people that, for example, drop them stuff that, that were crafted through Cheat Engine. It's just like that. It's like very, very, very integrated part of the community nowadays. That's and, I, and I think something that people do also need to keep in mind is that like there's a reason that the that all the PvPers are advocating for like a rune arc shop. Ultimately, what we want is a balanced video game at the end of the day. Like, that's really what we're looking for. Like, we want to have a balanced, convenient video game. And and I really hope that uh, the that FromSoft takes, you know, the recommendations of the PvP community seriously. And that these, you know, these limited access, uh, you know, consumables, for example, are put into a shop that we can buy. There's just absolutely no reason at this point in the game to have those things gated behind, you know, new game plus cycles. It's just, it's, Absolutely. it's, that's something that I, you know, I would love to turn up the pressure on, uh, from soft about that. Like I think about like, there are people in, in my community, you know, who are like dads with young kids who love this game, do not have the time or energy to be, you know, they want to jump in, they want to have a couple duels and they want to call it a day. Or they want to, you know what I mean? And like, there, there's, it's just punishing that person to not have that kind of thing in the game. And uh, so I, I really, really, really hope that FromSoft takes the community seriously on this one. And, and I, I really think that they can. Like they've, they've, I mean, 
the fact that they put wax dust into, into the base game is wild. Yeah, like the you know what I mean. I, like I absolutely love these developers ever since since patch one point zero six. Like I am, I am so happy with the progression of Elden Ring. It never was like that. They legitimately addressed the issues slowly but surely. 